Hey guys, welcome back to the Dental Duo. Today I'm gonna walk you guys through the AdSAS application now that the application cycle has officially opened. Last year when I was applying, I began filling it out the day it opened. It was May 10th. I officially submitted it by June 7th. And I literally worked on it every day for multiple hours at a time from May 10th to June 7th. So as you can see, it's a super lengthy process and it's very important that you get started right away. So I ended up applying to 14 schools of which seven of them accepted me and I've officially committed to the University of Maryland. So let's get right to navigating this AdSAS application. Let's first cover when to even start this process. You should be applying to dental schools a year before you intend to start dental school. You wanna make sure that you plan this out very well because this application process is extremely expensive it costs $264 to send your application to one school and then to send it to each additional school, it costs $115 per school. In addition, you'll also have to pay for other external costs such as supplemental application fees, which can range from $50 to $100 per school. So let's say you're applying to 10 schools. That's already $1,300 that you're spending just to send your applications to these schools. On the bright side, there are fee waivers that you can apply for as soon as the application opens. Assuming you qualify for the waiver, it'll cover the cost of applying to the first three schools. Just keep in mind that these fee waivers are on a first come, first serve basis, so make sure to apply for that as soon as possible. So the soft opening for this application season opens May 9th. That means that you have access to the whole application portal and can start filling out some information. However, you won't be able to hit the submit button until May 30th. I strongly recommend applying as early as possible, so I would really try to work right now on filling out that application to try and submit it on May 30th. Well, I understand that that's the first day applications open and that's a great goal to set, but don't worry if you're falling a little bit behind. I had the same goal for myself last year to submit it right when the application opened for submissions, but I ended up submitting it a couple weeks later. Just as long as you're proactive and get started now, you're giving yourself the best possible chance to receiving an interview early on and thus competing with less applicants. So with that being said, I strongly recommend that you submit your application no later than like August or so just to maximize the chance that you'll be getting a lot of interviews early on and less competition. So let's jump right into the first section of the application, personal information. This is probably the easiest and fastest section that you'll fill out. You just have to include basic biographic questions as well as contact information. Make sure that your phone number and your email address are super accurate and that you're checking your email address every day because these are the two main methods that you're going to be hearing from schools. Dental schools will call that phone number that you put on decision day to give you an acceptance. So make sure that phone number is accurate. In this section, you'll see two mini essay responses. Don't worry, they're short. The COVID-19 impact essay is this first essay right here. It gives you a chance to talk about how the pandemic may have had a positive or negative impact on your academic, personal, or professional life. I specifically spoke about my job at a summer camp and how I was challenged with tasks such as enforcing mask wearing on children who lacked an understanding of the situation, as well as dealing with an early shutdown of the camp. I followed that up by talking about how COVID-19 did not limit my opportunities and how I still sought out things such as virtual shadowing and how I started volunteering for Crisis Text Line as a virtual crisis counselor to aid people in moments of crisis. So make sure to talk about what you did during COVID and any limitations it may have brought you. But make sure to avoid a complete pity story. You want to kind of talk about how you went through the pandemic and still sought out opportunities and didn't let it completely limit your life. Also, this COVID-19 impact essay gives you 2,500 characters, so try to get as close as possible to those 2,500 characters. And the second mini essay we have here is the manual dexterity essay. It's also pretty short, just 600 characters to talk about how you have developed your hand skills. Right here, I've attached some examples of manual dexterity activities as per the Adia AdSAS website. If you want some inspiration, check out one of our videos on our manual dexterity activity, chicken breast suturing. 
This activity was super unique. It got a lot of attention from dental school interviews and I recommend you guys watching it. Next up, we have academic history, which is one of the more time consuming sections. First off, order those official transcripts. That should be the absolute first thing you should do. You wanna order these official transcripts from every college you have attended and received college credit from. It can take multiple days for ADSAS to finally receive the transcripts. So you wanna make sure that this is one of the first things you do to ensure that you get to submit your application once you're ready and you don't have to be waiting for the transcripts to be sent over. So for example, if you did dual enrollment during high school and received some college credits through a university, make sure to input that college with all the classes you took. To order the official transcripts, just follow the directions on the application portal. You may have to spend about 10 to $15 depending on the school to get the transcripts sent over. Just follow the steps. It's pretty self-explanatory. But again, make sure this is one of the first things you do because you're going to have to wait a few days for the transcripts to finally be sent over to ADSAS. You'll know once the transcripts have been received by ADSAS because you'll receive an email confirmation. Transcript entry is the next section where you will list all the courses you have taken with their respective credits, course number, grade, and the semester taken. It is definitely a lengthy process, especially if you're somebody like me who took 15 to 18 credits per semester, which you definitely don't have to do 15 to 18 credits, but I was crazy and I did that. So there are two ways to go about this section, self-entry or professional entry. I personally recommend just doing self-entry. That's where I filled out the transcript entry all by myself. And the professional entry service is a paid service offered by ADSAS, which automatically inputs all your classes for you. It costs about 100 dollars and takes 10 business days to process some people have had success with it but a lot of people have also reported inconsistencies and errors with this service so i don't recommend it and i recommend you just pull up your unofficial transcript and just write all the same courses the transcript entry must 100 percent perfectly reflect your official transcript so it's important to triple check the entire transcript entry regardless if you did the professional service or the self-entry any misspellings or inconsistencies in your transcript entry can really significantly delay the process of your application. So make sure you're triple checking all the spelling, all the grammar, all the numbers, all the grades, because the last thing you want to do is misspell a course, which then delays your application and delays your submission. Triple check it. Don't worry if you have not graduated and have not completed all of the prerequisites. You'll have a chance to update your application and update that transcript entry during the update period which is usually in September and then again in February to reflect your new fall semester and spring semester grade. Lastly, you will self-report your DAT scores if you've already taken it. If you plan on submitting your application before you take the DAT, you can go in and still edit that section after you've submitted your application to add your new DAT score. If this is the case, just keep in mind that schools may receive your submitted application, but they may not want to take further action with it until the DAT score is published in there. For DAT tips and tricks, make sure to watch Nico's video as he received a 99th percentile DAT score. Now we have the supporting information section, which is the third and probably the lengthiest section of the application in my opinion. First up, we have evaluations. This is where you will send requests to your recommenders of choice for letters of recommendation. ADSAS lets you submit up to four letters, even though most schools only require two to three letters. I personally submitted the maximum of four letters. I did two science professors, one dentist, and one club supervisor. Make sure you know the letter of rec requirements for each school so that when you're gathering your letters, you have met the requirements for each school. A lot of the requirements are the same. Most schools will ask for at least one or two science professors and a dentist. So those are definitely must haves. And make sure that each of the letters have any other requirements such as a signature and a letterhead. I made a video on letters of rec if you guys want to watch it up here. You can choose to have your recommenders submitted directly to ADSAS once they are done. In that case, you would add a recommender and you would input their contact information and then ADSAS will go ahead and send them an email asking them to upload it and you will not be able to see the letter. 
However, if you want to be proactive and request the letters much earlier before the application even opens, you can use this program called Interfolio. Interfolio lets you save the letter for an extended period of time and submit it to AdSAS whenever you're ready. In this case, your recommender would submit it to Interfolio and it would be stored there until you're ready to upload it to AdSAS. Interfolio does cost money, but it really relieved a lot of my stress as I was able to request my letters early on when requesting the letter through AdSAS, you will have to waive your right to view the letter. Once the recommender completes the request and sends the letter to AdSAS, you will not be able to delete it or edit it. So make sure that you're requesting through AdSAS people that you truly want because once it's in there, there's no getting out of it. Then we have the experiences section, which took forever for me. So make sure that you're really proactive about this section. I was on the higher end of experiences. I had 37, so you can imagine it took forever. Do not underestimate this section. It's a lot of information. Think of everything you did during your undergrad career, as well as your gap year if you took one. For each experience, you will have to categorize it into one of these categories, include contact information, the length of the experience, the position, and the hours you completed. And the most time consuming part for each experience would be writing a 600 character description of your key responsibilities and the experience. In order to help with this part, I had thankfully kept a log of everything I did throughout my four years of undergrad. Every volunteer opportunity, every service opportunity, every shadowing opportunity, I thankfully had kept a log of all of my experiences with contact information and the semester I did it, as well with a couple of bullet points about the experience. If you're early on on your pre-dental journey, I strongly recommend keeping a log as well to have all of your experiences in one place. And if you have pictures about any certain experience you did, look back at them and try to reminisce about the event so that it can help you write a compelling description about it. Once you have each of your experiences in, you can star up to six of them that you want to highlight to dental schools. Next up, we have achievements. These can be dental or non-dental related awards, honors, scholarships, or distinctions. For example, I use this section to heavily expand on my leadership positions, serving on the executive board for several of my student organizations. Make sure not to double dip on this section. You don't want to talk about an experience in the achievement section or an achievement in the experience sections. I know it might be difficult to differentiate between an experience and an achievement, but achievements typically focus more on a distinction or a specific title or award you achieved. That's why I spoke about my leadership positions in a club because I had to be elected and voted into those positions. Then we have the licenses section. Don't worry if you have nothing to put in here. I know a lot of people who didn't put anything for this and they still got into dental schools. Most commonly though, if you have a CPR or first aid certification, you can input it here as well as any x-ray license or dental assisting license. Lastly, we've reached one of the most intimidating parts of this application the personal statement. It's 4,500 characters to answer the simple but difficult question of why dentistry? You'll want to go through multiple revisions of this personal statement to get it perfect. So I recommend starting this process early on. Hopefully by now you have at least a first draft of the personal statement. Keep getting it revised and have it ready by the time you want to submit. I recommend writing your personal statement on a separate document and copying and pasting it here once you have it all ready. Remember to read it over multiple times and choose wisely who you want to revise your personal statement. At the end of the day, only you know your story best. I'll be making a more detailed video on personal statements and why I chose dentistry, so stay tuned for that. But this section is pretty self-explanatory just copy and paste your personal statement 4500 characters and try to get as close as possible to that word count the last section we have is program materials in this section you will select all the schools that you want to apply to each school will have a home section and this section will provide further application requirements contact information and more program details additionally a few schools will have a question section this small section may include supplemental questions required by the school each school you add will require you to select courses from your transcript entry that match the prerequisites required by that school. To do this for every school is a repetitive and tedious process, but make sure that you are selecting all the right courses. You can always add schools later on, even after you submit your application, just keep in mind that you'll have to pay that additional $115 per school. So when it comes to choosing schools, there are a few important factors that you should take into account. Some of these factors include stats, 
location and weather, out-of-state acceptance rate, family and friends, cost of attendance and cost of living, prerequisite courses, shadowing and volunteer hours, letter of rec requirements, and the class size. I personally narrowed down my list by focusing on out-of-state acceptance rates as well as cost of attendance. I'm from Florida so I definitely apply to all three Florida schools. Since I'm a Florida resident, I have a higher chance of getting into those schools. I think out-of-state acceptance rates is a big one to focus on just because you don't want to waste your time applying to schools that have very low out-of-state acceptance rates. For example, all the schools in Texas have extremely low out-of-state acceptance rates. They pretty much only want in-state applicants, so I wouldn't even waste your time applying to those schools unless you're from Texas. So in the description, I'm going to attach below a large document that I use to help narrow down my search that includes a ton of statistics about each school, the out-of-state acceptance rates, cost of attendance, and more. I ended up applying to 14 schools, which I honestly think was probably too many. At the time though, I felt fine applying to 14 schools because it gave me the peace of mind that I applied to a lot and hopefully at least one school would accept me. There's no set number of schools that you should apply to. It's totally dependent on how confident you feel about your application and where you see yourself at. I know people who have had success only applying to two dental schools and some people who have applied to 15 plus dental schools. Like I mentioned though, it is very expensive to apply to these schools so make sure that you are only applying to schools that you really see yourself at and finally make sure to apply broadly apply to schools with average stats lower than yours and then some higher than yours really think about what factors are important to you and try to compile at least an initial list of five to ten schools that you want to apply to and now once you've submitted your application the next step is that the application will go through a verification process and in this process AdSAS will verify that your official transcript scripts match everything in your transcript entry and it will calculate a GPA that will be used by dental school admissions. Check your email, even your junk mail. You'll receive an email once this verification process is complete and then you'll want to go into the application and make sure that your grades were inputted correctly and that your GPA looks pretty accurate as well. And then from here on out, keep checking your email daily as schools will start to send you supplemental applications and supplemental application fees for you to complete. And as time passes, hopefully you'll start receiving those interview invites. Like I said, the earlier you apply, the better your chances of getting those interview invites early on. Also, in the AdSAS portal, you can track the status of your application for each school. Some schools will automatically post their updates here as well as send you an email. So it's just best to be on top of all of your email as all the information will be sent directly there. And as the months pass, just keep taking your classes and keep shadowing and keep doing everything that you've been doing to then update the schools during the update periods in September and February. At this point the hard part is over and the ball's in their court it's just a waiting game and i know it's going to be hard and painful as you wait to see what these schools decide so it's best to just put it aside and give schools the time to review your application and just keep constantly checking your email for any updates also don't email and call schools all the time asking for status updates that just looks bad give them the time that they need a helpful resource during this waiting game is SDN, Student Doctor Network. This is a network of students applying just like you. There's certain threads for each school where people can create a post saying, oh, I got an interview invite or, oh, I just got a supplemental application. Try not to compare yourself though. I know it's hard, but try not to. Even if somebody's posted that they got an interview invite and you haven't heard yet, try not to get discouraged. Most of these schools send out interview invites in batches, so maybe you weren't in that first batch, but you'll be in the second batch, so try not to compare yourself. SDN also has a great resource where they have interview feedback for each school, where you can go in and see common interview questions that were asked by the school. That's a future problem once you've got interviews to worry about, and we'll definitely be making a video on that. So good luck guys, get those applications early, take advantage of this soft opening to start filling out everything and get it in as soon as possible to maximize your chances. Leave any questions below in the comments and Nico and I would be totally happy to help you out. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more content. Good luck.